Hey everybody, Broker Drag Times here. Welcome back to the channel. I gotta apologize. We are well into November and I have not put a video out. I've been traveling nonstop. I really do have a lot of great content coming soon. But before I get to that, we gotta talk about the McLaren 765LT and what's coming next. The coupe I've had almost a year now and I usually don't do spiders. But in this case, I've decided to go ahead and order a 765LT spider. In this video, I'm gonna go over the two spec options that I met with MSO on. And uh, after this video, we'll have to decide what I'm going with. So with the 765 LT Spider, McLaren's doing something new. Well, new for me. So I actually had a Zoom session with uh, some McLaren folks overseas and uh, my representatives from McLaren Palm Beach. And they actually bring up the CAD drawings of the McLaren 765 LT. And this kind of configurator is way above anything you would do on a normal website where you could just change the colors, change the wheels, and maybe a couple of interior options. In these spec sessions, we got to use the real CAD drawing that they use for designing the car and basically change anything you want on the car. There is no limit to what they will do, of course. There are high price tags that come along with that. But in this video, I'm gonna go over my two specs that I'm thinking about going with the replacing the 765 LT Coupe with the 765 LT Spider. Now, this is my first green car, and my first inclination was to keep the same color and go with green again, but raise the spec quite a bit because I do believe I'm gonna have the 765 LT Spider a lot longer than I had this car. This car will probably have about a year before I move on to the Spider, but the 765 LT Spider is gonna be the last of the kind of non-hybrid McLarens, and I think it's gonna be the one to keep for a really, really long time. So that's why I'm going a little heavier spec than I normally do. As you saw in previous video with this car, the only options I really did that cost money were the color, the Napier Green, which is about $9,000. Um, the wheels didn't cost anything, and then I think the only other thing I did on this car that actually paid for was this kind of moderate interior uh, modification on the stitching. So these are the P1 McLaren seats uh, with some green stitching. That was about $5,700. And uh, you know, the total sticker price of this car came out to about $380,000. Now the Spider starts quite a bit higher than that at about 20,000. And let's go over the two options. So the first option was to keep the Napier green, which is about, they increased the price. So it's $12,000 on the Spider instead of the 9400 on the coupe. So some other options I'm adding is the black pack. So you can go with carbon fiber optional on this, which cost about thirty to $40,000 to do everything in carbon because you'd have to do this piece, the side skirts, the lower piece here, all of this. And then in the spider, there's gonna be a big tonneau cover, which costs money as well, onto the back, which you have the lower diffuser area, which is an additional charge as well. So in this case, I'm, on the, if I go with green, I'm deciding to do the black pack. That's $18,000. And what that does is it paints all the gray pieces you see on the car black, which I think I've seen it in other cars and it looks really, really awesome. So $18,000 for the black pack. And of course, you know how I like the diamond cut wheels. There is a new style of wheel that comes on the Spider, which is a super or ultra lightweight, which is a little bit lighter, costs about $4,500. And that will actually make it different than the coupes. So I wanted the fresher, newer wheel design, and it's also lighter. I'll put a picture up here of what the new wheels look like, and those are going to be uh, diamond cut as well. Now onto the interior of the car. This is where you know I spent quite a bit more than I'm used to. Uh, because it's a spider and the top comes down, the interior is going to be much more visible, and I felt like a pretty dark interior like this was a little mundane. So in this case, I decided to spec out custom Napier green stitching. Still going with the P1 seats, but going to stitch, but add some green accents here and some custom stitching and stripes to make it a much cooler and brighter interior. Also did some things on the inside and on the doors. And these customizations are coming out to about $15,000 for the custom kind of green accents inside the Spider 765. Now along to the back on the Spider, I did something a little unique, which I hope is unique on this spec, which was in the back here, this is, comes as a stealth package. You can either get black tips and black uprights right here, or you can split them. And what I did is I split them. I kept the titanium exhaust because I liked how the blue kind of shines in there, but I blacked out this. That's a cost of 
and about $800 to get those blacked out. And since I was blacking out that, I decided to black out the underside of the wing. So you can see how the underside of the wing right now is green. This is gonna be black as well. So it's gonna create this black kind of oval shape around the back and give it a much more sportier look. This painting underneath here black is about $4,000 extra above what they charge on the $18,000 black pack. So the total cost of the spider with the black pack underside wing black custom interior $15,000 comes out to about $443,000, quite a bit more than the $380,000 spec you are looking right here. Now, when I had these meetings with MSO, they actually showed me quite a few different liveries of what they can do and they've already specced out uh, maybe for some other customers or to attract customers to these special specs. And one of those that really caught my eye was the Golf Edition of the 765 LT. So I'm gonna put up some pictures here of uh, the custom Golf Edition that they specced out for me. I mean, it, it was just so radical. And you know, anytime you have the blue and orange, even if you don't have the Golf logos, Golf still has some kind of trademark or licensing on those kind of schemes. And you have to pay Golf every time you use that scheme. So the cost is quite, quite expensive. I believe for just the paintwork, we're looking at $150,000 extra just for this Golf that you're looking at. And of course, when we walk around to the inside of the seats, wow, MSO pulled off some really, really, wicked interior for the Golf. I mean, look at all the striping and the orange around the seats and it just looks incredible. So it looks like 443,000 would be for the Spider and the Napier Green with the black pack and all that kind of stuff. And if you add up what the options were coming on for the Golf Edition, we're looking at about $200,000 above the sticker. So I think we're probably approaching around the $600,000 mark for the Golf Edition. And I did ask, I'm like, how many people have ordered this already? Now they wouldn't tell me, but they did say that, uh, you know, even though if I ordered the Golf, it would not be unique. So there's definitely going to be, before I spec mine out and make a decision between Golf and Napier Green, some other Golf Editions out there. So the fact that it's not that unique is a taking a little bit away. Of course, you know, I'm sure other people would order green, but again, again, I'm not spending $600,000 either. All right, so drop in the comments. I'm gonna put pictures up of both. What do you think, Napier Green 765LT Spider or Golf Edition? Drop your comments below. I'm definitely leaning towards the green, but the Golf is still kind of stuck in my mind as an option that would be definitely different addition to my garage and something that you probably will not see out there. Now, before I leave you, I'm gonna leave you with some previews because I do have some crazy content coming up. We did a rematch of the 765 and the Ferrari SF90 Stradale. We put Toyo tires on the back of the 765 and I have to say, this was probably one of the closest races we've ever done. I'll put a little preview up and you drop in the comments down below, who do you think won 765 versus SF90? I also did the rematch of the 765 LT versus the Plaid, also on the Toyo tires. And I will put a preview of that up as well. And you can drop a who do you think won. I wish I could get these videos out sooner. It takes a lot of editing time and I've just been traveling too much. I'm also gonna leave you with some draggy testing. I've always wanted to test the McLaren 765 LT in the half mile. And uh, I finally got a chance to do that. The weather's not great. It's a little cooler than normal. I put the toilet tires on the back and was going for the best time I could get on the street. Unfortunately, as you see, it's still spinning. I think the toilet is maybe a little bit old for hooking on the street. And I gotta say, one mistake I did make, you'll notice, is that um, since the toilet tire is a little taller, it messes with the gearing and that throws off the speedometer. So although what you see in the video is impressive for a half mile, I do believe I needed to stretch it out a little longer and probably would have gotten a little faster speeds down the half mile. So you will see the draggy tests, half mile 765 LT as well. So I wanted to get this video out soon about the spec of the 765, preview of the races, because honestly, I might have to sell the 765 soon uh, to prepare for this spider. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up, helps the video and the channel. And if you want to see these races that we got coming, SF90, 765, and Plaid, make sure you're subscribed so you'll be notified. Thanks for watching.